We're all aware of the gravity of the COVID-19 crisis around the world and right here in Nevada. I have taken what I believe were the necessary steps to try to mitigate this pandemic and take our, to keep our community safe, including closing our K-12 schools and recommending that we follow social distancing guidelines. Today, it is clear additional steps must be taken immediately in order to slow the spread of this deadly virus in our state. We have all closely monitored the World Health Organization and CDC guidelines and research. The World Health Organization has stated that the number of secondary infections generated from one infected individual is between 2 and 2.5 for COVID-19. That's higher than the rate of reproduction for the flu. And according to experts at Imperial College in the United Kingdom, the doubling rate of this virus globally is roughly four to five days. That spread is truly alarming. Our hospitals are prepared right now to help those most critically affected by this virus. And in fact, 80% of those who are infected have only mild or no symptoms. But in order for those who will need critical care to be able to receive it, the rest of us need to do our part to stay healthy and to keep our facilities available for those patients that need it. It is our responsibility, our duty, to each, in, to each other and to the most vulnerable Nevadans to each take our role in stopping the spread seriously and stay home for Nevada. Remember that these medical professionals are doctors, nurses, emergency workers, these folks are putting their own lives at risk for all of us. They have to go to work every day. That's their job, and they're committed to helping and treating us. You are being told not to go out. You are being told not to go out. You owe it to them to listen to that directive. I've spoken with the chief medical officers of all of Nevada's hospitals to get their assessment of our current situation and most responsible next steps. They have advised me that the most effective course of action is to direct all Nevadans to stay home and for non-essential businesses to close to the public for 30 days. My ultimate goal here is to come together as Nevadans to save lives. That requires aggressive strategies aimed at mitigating community spread. Medical professionals have made it abundantly clear that there is no treatment. While a vaccine is being developed, we don't have time to waste. At this time, we must act aggressively and decisively to protect ourselves, our families, and our community. The following COVID-19 risk mitigation policies are proven to be effective at reducing death and illness and slowing down the rate of transition in prior pandemics. All Nevadans must ensure that six feet of social distancing per person for non-family members is maintained. Only essential services should remain open, such as fire, police, transit and health care services, in addition to businesses that provide food, shelter or social services for disadvantaged populations. Non-essential services, such as beauty shops, barber shops, nail, tanning, waxing salon should close until further notice. Only essential businesses should remain open, such as pharmacies, grocery stores, drug and convenience stores, banks and financial institutions, hardware stores, and gas stations. All gatherings should be postponed or canceled. This is not the time for sleepovers, play dates, concerts, theater outings, or athletic events. Although you might not be experiencing symptoms at this time, you may be contagious. Do not risk your health or the health of others. Many of you will not be in your office or at work over the next few weeks. This is not a vacation, and it's not a time to catch up with friends. It's definitely not the time to go to the movies. Every social contact increases your risk of exposure. The bigger the group, the higher the risk. This means that you should stay away from auditoriums, stadiums, arenas, large conference rooms, meeting halls, and cafeterias. I know in time of stress, many of you like to seek the release that comes from the fitness center. 
Until this risk goes away, find other ways to exercise, such as at-home workouts, hikes, or other outdoor activities. But as you do so, remember to maintain social distancing from others doing the same. Some events are unavoidable. We want you to experience the joy of weddings. But this is not the time to bring your friends together, especially if this will require travel. Consider postponing the celebration to a time when risk is low or eliminated. For my friends making preparations to say goodbye to loved ones, please limit the attendance at funeral services. Consider outdoor services or the risk of exposure is less than inside. This is only common sense. At a time when people are getting sick from simply being near others, is not the time for gyms to remain, well, remain open. This is not the time for casinos to remain open. This is not the time for community recreation centers, clubhouses, movie theaters, and malls to remain open. If your business brings groups of people together, it should not be open. Although I cannot, will not say that places of worship should be closed, I strongly urge our faith leaders to find ways to deliver to your congregation without bringing them together in person. Charitable food distribution sites, including the meals being distributed to our students in the wake of the school closings, along with the grocery stores, should remain fully open and operational. Food services for healthcare facilities and other essential facilities should remain open. Any buffet or food station used in charitable food distribution settings should be transitioned to box meals or served through glove staff members or volunteers. And I ask grocery stores to consider setting aside shopping hours for our most vulnerable population and our seniors. Restaurants throughout Nevada, in addition to pubs, wineries, bars, and breweries that include meals provided by a full kitchen, should be reduced to serving food only in a drive through takeout at the curb, or delivery capacities. No dine-in food establishments should be allowed until further notice. This also includes food courts, coffee shops, catered events, clubs, bowling alleys, and other similar venues which people congregate for the consumption of food or beverages. Pubs, wineries, bars, and breweries that do not include meals provided by a full kitchen must close. To summarize, I'm telling non-essential businesses you have two choices. Find a way to service your customers through delivery, drive through curbside pickup or front door service, or close your doors. These COVID-19 risk mitigation members will be fully effective as of noon tomorrow. In addition, today in consultation with Gaming Board Chair Sandra Douglas Morgan, I announced that all gaming machines, devices, table games, and any equipment related gaming activity will be shut down effective midnight tonight. Restaurants and bars located within gaming properties will be subject to the same restrictions as those outlined above. Finally, we will ensure that there is as little as disruption as possible to transportation and the supply chain in Nevada during this time. Truck stops and truck service centers will remain open so that motor carriers will be able to deliver supplies as needed. I know there will, come some, there will be some who will disagree with my decision, some who will think this is an overreaction. I want you to know I have spent countless hours working with medical experts, the White House, the CDC, labor and industry leaders, and I fully believe that this is an appropriate and informed reaction. We have many vulnerable populations in the state of Nevada. And we have a shared responsibility to protect the elderly, the health care workers, and all of our first responders. I know the impacts of this decision will reach far and wide into the homes and lives of our Nevada families. This was not an easy decision to make. But in the last few days, groups and entities across the state of Nevada have stepped up. Their efforts during this difficult time will make this storm easier to weather. In less than 24 hours, the Nevada Department of Agriculture set up more than 70 sites across our great state so the children impacted by school closures could continue to receive free meals. Charter Communications announced they'd be offering free access to Spectrum broadband and provide Wi-Fi for students. The Silver State Health Exchange took swift action, announcing a limited time enrollment. There is no better time than right now to take proactive steps to ensure your health in the future. 
and Las Vegas Justice Court has announced they're suspending all eviction proceedings at this time. I want to thank utility agencies like NV Energy, Southwest Gas, Las Vegas Valley Water District, and Truckee Meadows Water Authority and many others for agreeing to suspend disconnections during this time. Our cities, counties, and state agencies have done tremendous work to limit the public's exposure while continuing to do the public's business. Also, the Nevada Department of Employment, Training, and Rehabilitation encourages all Nevadans who have lost their job to file unemployment online. Please file your claims online. The state has prepared for an expected increase by extending call center hours for individuals who cannot access these services online. There are many other examples of selfless Nevadan individuals and businesses who have taken extraordinary measures in these extraordinary times. I thank all of you for your dedication and to know that to get, together Nevada will get through this. We have been working closely with Nevada's bipartisan congressional delegation, and I want to thank them for their help, both in recent days and in advance as we, con as we continue to work. Nevada needs and appreciates their leadership and hard work. Through the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, which will become law as soon as the Senate passes and the President signs it, our delegation has helped amplify our calls for ensuring appropriate testing for Nevadans and trying to ensure that our health agencies have access to the testing, protective supplies, and life-saving equipment that are necessary to protect both patients and our doctors and nurses. I also appreciate that the Families First Act will be providing expanded emergency paid leave two weeks of paid sick leave and up to three months of paid family and medical leave and funding for nutrition assistance programs and school meals. We know that more will need to be done when the coronavirus pandemic has passed to get our economy back on its feet and people traveling again. In the meantime, I hope Congress will support direct cash payments to people of all walks of life so that families can keep foot putting food on the table, paying their rent and keeping their lives together. We have too many people living paycheck to paycheck as it is, and we know that the pandemic will make the odds longer for many. To calm many fears or rumors, I also wanted to note that the Nevada National Guard has not been activated. However, they are always standing at the ready to assist with community support if and when they are called upon. I know this directive will cause many of our family and friends to distress, but I ask you, what are you willing to do to save your own life and the lives of those you love. We absolutely must take this step for every Nevadan's health and safety. Please, please take this seriously. Lives are at stake, and each day passing, this pandemic is growing. Please stay home for Nevada. I ask all of our business who must remain open to consider hiring those who will be out of work for the next few weeks. Delivery services will need drivers, Call centers will need people to handle increased volume. Stores need people to restock shelves. Please join me in thanking our heroes who continue to put themselves in harm's way to keep us safe. Our first responders and our medical community who selflessly sacrifice their own safety for all of us every day. Please stay home for them. Let us show the rest of the world our spirit, our sense of community, and our resolve to help each other and to overcome obstacles in the most difficult times. We are strong. We are resilient. We will get through this. I want to note this is likely my last press conference in person to protect my staff, to protect the members of the media. We will continue to update all of our Nevadans through other methods, including videos, emails, and at the dedicated Nevada Health Response website, nvhealthresponse.nv.gov. Thank you for joining us here this evening. I'd take a few questions. This is for 30 days. For all of them, and we will reevaluate in 30 days. It's the protection and the well being of the people of Nevada is of my utmost concern, and they should all close effective tomorrow at noon. Daycares are allowed to remain open, but we ask them to have staffing appropriately and distance separation, social distance or separation. Yes, sir. What about jails and detention centers, like immigration detention centers? Are they open? Are they being tested? 
The jails and detention centers are currently operating their capacity, and that will remain the same in the foreseeable future. I think that the people of Nevada understand how serious this is and that if they care about their own well-being, if they care about the well-being of their loved ones, they will heed this advice from the best medical professionals in the United States and in the world. Stay home, prevent the spread of the disease. Casinos? The casino closure involves every casino in the state of Nevada every gaming piece of equipment in the state of Nevada. I'll repeat, every gaming device must be turned off by midnight tonight. The casinos will not be open and have any gambling activity. That includes the bars, includes the convenience stores, includes the grocery stores. All gaming operations must cease by midnight tonight. What's that? I don't know if I can make this any clearer, that people are looking for a loophole here. This is affecting the lives of our citizens. People are dying. You know, every day that is delayed here, I'm losing a dozen people on the back end are going to die as a result of this. Kevin Durant, one of the most fit people in the world, tested positive today. It's incumbent upon the citizens of this state to take this seriously. Next question. These are the measures that I was advised by the medical professionals that we contacted that we hope we can get a handle on the spread of this epidemic with these, of this pandemic with these actions, and we'll be evaluating this on a continuous basis. Governor, yes, sir. I'm not here to talk about money and bailouts today. I'm all here to talk about the health and well-being of the people of the state of Nevada. Our folks that live here, our folks that work here, that's my primary concern. John. Governor, some elected officials have differed with you uh, with the seriousness of public claims, uh, talking about uh, whether to shut down restaurants and bars. Are you comfortable that everyone's singing from the same uh, sheet? I don't know what sheet they're singing from, John, but I can tell you this. As governor of the state of Nevada, it is my responsibility to protect the health and well-being of every person in the state, and this is serious. If somebody doesn't understand the seriousness of this, turn on the news and watch it for a little bit. It's incumbent upon us to protect ourselves, our families, and our most vulnerable populations, and I encourage everybody to participate. Stay home for Nevada. Thank you all very much.